Hello and good evening. I am Natalie. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the person who oversees the women and non-binary program at Bike Pittsburgh. Uh, so this is our second virtual meetup of the year. Um, We're going to be talking about biking communities and rides. Um, so kind of the point of this uh, workshop or meetup or whatever you want to call it is um, a lot of people who come to the women on binary rides uh, know that we don't do them quite as often as people would like. Um, and it's also more of a beginner ride sometimes. And so uh, we wanted to reach out to all of these great connections we have in the city and let you know that there are other people who host rides. Um, they go they go further than we go sometimes, they go faster than we go sometimes. Um, they do different styles of rides. And, um, and yeah, so we just wanted to like, kind of let you know that they exist and that they're out there and different ways that you can get involved in the cycling community. So, um, that didn't work. Uh, so this is a safe space um, for anybody really. Uh, that's the whole goal of the Women and Non-Binary Program. Um, so I have a little prompt here to read is that the Women and Non-Binary Program is inclusive of trans and cis women, interse intersex people, non-binary, genderqueer, agender, and gender variant folks, as well as those whose gender identity falls outside of the dominant consumption, conceptions of gender. Uh, this program encourages conversations and spaces to come together over biking, advocacy, and related topics while increasing representation of people who have historically marginalized gender identities. Um, so really all that to say is that we know in the cycling community, it is very um, dominated by white cis men. And so we're here to say we exist and we're gonna take up our space and we're gonna have fun doing it. And so we just have a couple community agreements to go over, um, take care of yourself and your needs. So, you know, in this space, if you don't wanna have your video on, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you want to turn your, leave your video on, but turn it off to take water or eat food, also completely understandable, take care of yourself. Um, step up and step back, which really just means like create space for everybody. Uh, we will have a, a portion of kind of Q&A and discussion. So like, just be aware of how, how much you're talking or maybe how little you're talking um, and always speak from an I place, right? We're not gonna make assumptions about others. We're here to talk about our personal or our lived experiences and really nothing else. Um, so just a little, little thing to get you involved. Um, we have our Facebook page and we also have the newsletter. I feel like most of you on here are already pretty involved. I recognize your faces and your names. Um, but for anybody who's new tonight, uh, cause we do, you know, cross-reference this and post this in other places, uh, please join the Facebook group or the newsletter to stay more involved with our, our meetups and rides. Uh, and then this is what we're gonna kind of go over tonight or our guest speakers. So we have Miss Robin Woods. Um, if you wanna wave when I say your name or something, just so people know who you are. Uh, she does Black Girls Do Bike and Women at Work, um, which we were just talking before, Women at Work goes on like three bike rides a week. So if you're really interested to getting out there more often, that might be the group for you. Uh, we have Annalena Kempen. Did I just say the last name right? Uh, so Annalena also does um, several things. A lot of people wear many hats in this community. So uh, she is our fearless leader of Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes, as well as the Women's Weekly Rides. Uh, then we have um, Katie Blackburn, who is our, I want to say volunteer coordinator, but like, I feel like it's more herding cats of getting people over at free ride. And, you know, that's a safe space to work on your bike or to um, donate some time. And then you're able to get a bike. I'm sure that's a very rough overview. And Katie will go into more depth about that. Um, Karen is here tonight. Um, Thank you, Karen, because she is on Bike Pittsburgh's board, but also uh, gives some of her time at the wheel mill um, for Ride Like a Girl weekend, as well as Girl Nights. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Should have had that written down. Um, and then Angelica. 
Hi, Angelica. This is my first time meeting you. Hello. Um, so, <laughs> hello. You are also at the wheel mill, um, which is kind of why you guys are going to go next to each other, um, vibe off each other, give us all the information. And then Alyssa Crawford uh, works at Venture Outdoors and has just started a mountain biking clinic, which I'm um, super excited about. And if you're on the Facebook page, I'm sure you've seen some of the stuff that we try to cross promote. Uh, and then we have our agenda here, just so everybody knows what's going on um, about time is 6 to 6.15 is me talking at you, which is almost over. Um, at 6.15, we're going to start with our panelists and they'll go in this order. And then we do have time set aside for Q&A. Um, not a hard stop at 7.30. Uh, I did tell the panelists we might be here till eight, but I just want everyone to know that there is going to be space for questions. Um, so if you think of anything, write it down and we have plenty of time afterwards to go over everything. And then, so Katie, this is your presentation. So we can go back and I will stop sharing because Ms. Robin doesn't have a presentation. I am done sharing and I will turn it over to Ms. Robin. Okay, I'll try that again. Good evening, everyone. I'm um, Robin, Natalie calls me Ms. Robin for obvious reasons. <laughs> so um, a couple years ago, um, I, it was started riding preseason and um, just on, you know, Wednesdays preseason before my primary um, bicycle club started riding. And then when the pandemic hit, um, I came up with the idea because I also lost my job in corporate America during the pandemic when it first started. So then my goal after retirement was to become an LCI and that would give me an opportunity to, opportunity to do what I love to do. And that is to teach people safe cycling, which I have been doing all along um, unofficially. But um, Last year, I became an LCI. Um, I had started Women at Work before then. And it's a group um, of women who um, like to ride, like to ride distance. Um, we like the guys, the guys do ride with us um, once a month. We have both male and female members. But with Women at Work, my primary um, focus is education. Okay, and um, so, but in order to get our name out there and in order to hone in on our skills and to stay fit, we have to ride. <laughs> and so um, that's why Natalie said we ride a lot. So, um, and I'm also the Shiro for Black Girls Do Bike. So I wear two hats, but um, Women at Work is my baby. Black Girls Do Bike um, was created by Monica Garrison. And I represent the Pittsburgh chapter um, of Black Girls Do Bike. So with those two hats, I am in the saddle or riding a bike three times a week. And if I have a trainee, if I'm teaching, then it might be four times a week. So, you know, and I love it because um, that's what I do. Um, that's who, who I am. So I'll just start with, um, I didn't do any um, slides because everything is right here. So for women at work to see our, our schedule, you would just go to our website, womenatwork.com. And I can put that in the um, chat. And if you go to the events tab here, it will bring up our schedule, our, all of our rides for the week, month, for the season that I have um, planned out. 
So um, here on Thursday, June 2nd, the ride was canceled because of, you know, the weather. There's a ride going on um, right now. It's um, led by one of our um, members of Women at Work and the Shiro, Becky, uh, the Shiro of Black Girls Do Bike. And on the first Monday of each month, the men, they come and they ride with us. So, and we have a lot of fun. I usually ride with my primary group on the weekend, but uh, last weekend I led a ride from Pittsburgh to um, Verona, where we visited a woman-owned marina, and it was very, very nice. And again, if you go to my Facebook page, Women at Work Cycling Club, you'll see the pictures of that particular um, excursion. Um, okay, so um, the membership tab, it just shows <laughs> some of us girls over the years. The membership is $25 a year for women at work. And what we do is, what that covers is insurance. Um, should, unfortunately, should there be an accident related to cycling, um, the American League of Bicyclists has us insured um, as the secondary or tertiary carrier. And unfortunately for me, I've had to use it and it, it does work. It won't be your primary carrier unless you don't have any insurance. And most people have some type of insurance, but it definitely will kick in to help reduce your um, out of pocket. So that's why we charge um, $25 a year. So off season, um, we do other things too. Um, we hike, we snowshoe, and if you partner with um, Venture Outdoors or Outdoors Afro, you can also ski. Um, because those two groups, they do have um, skiing events, but we do have hiking and um, snowshoeing. Um, and as I said, my um, Okay, we have a pop up here. What's going on? Huh. Okay, um, here's the Black Girls Do Bike website for Facebook. Um, but I can't. What's going on? I have a pop up here. And I don't know how to get out of it. Okay. I can share my screen for you. Yeah, I don't know why that um, it says Zoom United. I can't get rid of it. Let me minimize this. That's weird. I don't know, you'll have to help me out here, Natalie. Okay, I'm gonna take over. Oh, here we go. Okay, I think I have it now. <laughs> oh, you got it now? I'll start yeah, with. I have it. Okay. I'm oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay, so this was, um, this page focuses on um, training packages and the workshops. So sometimes people, um, we call them newbies, people who are relatively new at cycling, they will um, hire us or hire myself to um, teach them how to ride a bike. And uh, so this was Myrna. This was right at the... Um... Robin, real... okay, there you go. So you're showing your screen again. I didn't see that at first, thank you. Oh, okay. So this is Myrna here. I'm sharing for you, Ms. Robin. So let me know if you need me to click on something. Oh, okay. Can you see it? Can everybody see it? I'm just at the homepage for Black Girls Do Bike right now. Okay. All right. I am on. I'm sorry, guys. So yeah, I'm I'm good, Natalie. If you could get out of that. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And now just click to reshare it. Okay. Tell me if you can see a lady on a bike. Not yet. We just see your face so far. I think you have to reshare your screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Huh. I got kicked out. All right, I don't know what to do here. So can somebody else kick do, in? Do you wanna send me, can you put the link in the chat and then I can share my screen? Okay. all part of the zoom world right i was fine until that pop-up came <laughs> i know we were we were on here early yeah we troubleshot everything but all right hold on here screen share there we go how about now it's up there perfect that's good. Are we good? We're good. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm breaking out here and it's not a cold sweat. It's a very hot sweat. So anyway, this is Myrna. This was one of my first um, customers during the pandemic. As you see, everybody was wearing a, a mask outside. So if you want it um, one on one, then this is the pricing for the one on one companion cycling. but you know, most people just come on group rides. If they want to ride with us, they come on group ride. But I do do a lot of uh, heel training. I do a lot of um, heel training and for climbing. So this is um, Lisa and she is, she's real good now. She even rode up to my house. So yeah, she did real well on this particular heel climbing event. And actually, um, I'm having a workshop on June 25th. And another service that I offer is bike purchasing assistance. And that's really the best $25 a person can spend because there's nothing worse than buying a bike that is not right for you. So that is education, um, education that I also provide. Um, this tab is just for um, photos of some of our rides and some of the things that we've done, some of our travels over the years. This is um, our shopping tab where you can buy jerseys, bibs, um, jackets, hats. And um, so the, the Women at Work Boutique opens a couple times a year. So right now the boutique is closed. It will open again on July the 1st. And um, I already have a couple orders ready to go in. And this tab is just our, my credentials and the people who have helped me along the way. And you can view all this um, on your own. Um, I won an award, I think it was in 2021. Yeah, 2021. I am currently a board member of Friends of the Riverfront and the Western Pennsylvania Bicycle Club, formerly known as uh, the Western Pennsylvania Wheelman. So everybody is trying to get away from not being inclusive. So their um, step to reach out to people of color and of women, to women, was to ask me to be a board member. So I'm very excited about that. And it's been a very, very positive experience um, working with a bicycle club that was 
historically um, known to be all white um, men. So it, it's been a lot of fun. I tell you, I have um, another pop up. Can you guys see it? We can. I think you need to update your Chrome. That might help take care of some of it. Ah. Uh, um, okay. But maybe don't do that. I don't want you to get kicked out of the meeting. So maybe do that after you log yeah, in. Yeah, I'm not going to try <laughs> And um, Robin, it's Mara. Can I just throw something in real quick? Yeah, I was going to say, Mara, I saw you had your hand raised. Um, for for oh, whatever it's... Oh, for whatever it's worth, folks, Robin did help me buy a new bike last summer. It the best. Her name is Prudence. My bike, not Robin. Um, we had the best time. Robin was just phenomenal. You won't. It's twenty five dollars that you won't even miss because you will get the most spectacular bike. The twenty five dollars for a membership for a year. Twenty five dollars is is nothing for the amount of rides that you could possibly go on between the organizations and just, yeah, Robin taught me how to do hills. I didn't know how to do hills. I'm a Pittsburgher who didn't know do, how to do hills. And Robin taught me how to do hills. Um, and in fact, July 2nd, we're going on to our next, how to do more hills, I think yes. it's called. But um, so Robin didn't ask me to say this. I'm just saying this because she, she is my teacher and um, she is fantastic and our rides, just what a phenomenal group of, of individuals we have, so. Thank you for sharing that, Mara. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Mara's taking her hill climbing to another level <laughs> in a couple of weeks because, you know, there's even hills on trails and um, lots of hills when it comes to uh, mountain biking and gravel rides because I am on the trails in Frick Park and I see the mountain bikers in their lowest gears and it, it's just really great. So you really can't escape the hills here. And what I have on my screen now is just um, the black girls do bike. We um, actually see the email from me. <laughs> um, you're on your Gmail. Um, but you know what? Let's take a time. Let's let's go on to Annalena, and we can come back. Um, but yes, Miss Robin is also the Shiro for uh, Black Girls Do Bike, and the Facebook is Black Girls Do Bike uh, Pittsburgh. If you're looking for it, um, but yeah, we can we'll circle back and touch base on that just for the sake of time right now. So. Um, you can stop sharing and then we'll pass it over to Annalena. And I don't think you, I can make you a co-host if you want to share your screen or if you no, just- No, I don't have any <laughs> screens or anything to share. I'm just going to talk and everybody. Perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah, it might be a good idea. <laughs> okay. So um, my name is Annalena Kempen. I run Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes, um, which is a group that was originally started by a loose co-op of cycling women to create a calendar um, for sale to fundraise for the women's shelter. So the first calendar was kind of a one-shot sort of thing and the group disbanded afterwards. Um, and this actually have the calendar here, I don't know if you guys, this is the first one. Um, anyway, so that original calendar production kind of happened during what I remember as um, the peak time of fun alley cats in the city for me. Um, if you're not familiar with alley cats, these are DIY style street races that are modeled after the day of a bike messenger. So um, a bike messenger starts work by arriving at their headquarters, gets a list of delivery locations to hit. So they'll be delivering packages around the city. Um, and they do this in any order via any route that they, that they prefer. So the messenger will bike through the city as efficiently as possible to deliver packages quickly, since the more packages they deliver, the more they get paid. Um, so there's some skills involved, um, such as utilizing a know-how of city roads and cut-throughs, planning stops in order to minimize total distance pedaled, and um, of course, navigating through traffic. 
So at each delivery location, the messenger gets a signature from the recipient. Um, and once all the deliveries are made, uh, the messenger will ride back to headquarters. Um, and in an alley cat, which is modeled around this day of work of a bike messenger, the racer arrives at a start location, aka the headquarters, is given a list of checkpoints to hit. They'll draft their own route around the city, ride to the checkpoints in whatever order they deem the fastest, most efficient. And then at each checkpoint, their manifest or their list of checkpoints will be stamped or they'll have to do some kind of task to show that they arrived at that spot. And then once they've hit the checkpoints, um, they'll go back to a finished location. And generally the winner of the race in a classic alley cat is whoever gets back first. But of course this model can be creatively tweaked in essentially infinite ways. So anyway, um, most of the alley cats that were happening back when I was getting into them were being run by what I think of as um, like the old heads of the Pittsburgh DIY punk bike scene. There was Brad and Jeff who ran Urban Velo, an old cycling magazine, and they threw the Spring Roll, which was a spring and Chinese restaurant themed alley cat. Um, Dave Gingrich hosted the Pirate Bike Triathlon, a kind of obstacle course alley cat um, where there were tasks such as having to climb a tree or we had to build a raft and ford one of the rivers out of, build the raft out of salvaged materials for a river. Um, E-Rock hosted Halloween alley cats and the first, which was, was the first alley cat I ever raced, it was Ozzy Osbourne themed and I ended up riding with somebody that I didn't know at the time but ended up being, turned out to be Scott Bricker. Um, and then there was a handful of others. So there were poker themed alley cats, shoots and ladders cats that had an emphasis on hills and steps. Um, we did a Zodacat alley cat uh, that was astrological themed. Um, but at some point, these guys kind of burned out on organizing, and some of them expressed an interest in a younger generation kind of stepping up and taking over. So I was really into alley cats. Um, I thought they were awesome. So me and my roommate at the time restarted Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes as an organization that was focused on women's advocacy in cycling and also on rekindling the alley cat scene. Um, the first alley cat that we threw was called Ladies Night. Um, and at the checkpoints, the riders who were of all genders had to do sort of ridiculous tasks like identify decks of badass lady flashcards, embroider their name and fabric, fill out Mad Libs based on lifetime movie plots. Um, and for bonus points, they could go around the city and find and like get the phone numbers of guys that I had planted around bars in Pittsburgh whose brainy photos and first names were printed at the bottom of their manifest. So this is the manifest from that alley cat. And these are the photos and names of the dudes whose phone numbers they could pick up in bars. So there was a lot of racers heading into bars around Pittsburgh and asking random guys if they were Alex or Chris or Alistair asking for their numbers. So anyway, it snowed, it was awesome, everyone loved it. Um, and with this first alley cat, we intended to break into the planning, um, alley cat planning scene and establish Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes as a resource for anyone who wanted to throw an alley cat but wasn't sure how to set it up or the logistics that were involved, essentially how to game it. So um, you can make an alley cat bare bones and simple and straightforward, or you can make it endlessly complicated, but ultimately it's a game that's played on bikes um, and every game needs sound rules to make it a good time. So Pittsburgh Babies on Bikes does currently exist as a sort of alley cat experience consultation service. Um, there's many ways to contact us. You can uh, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, email. There's a contact form on our website, pghbabesonbikes.com. And I can put all these things in the chat. Um, also on our Instagram, we do share a lot of other groups, rides and events. Um, so for example, Unison is a bike shop in the, in the Strip District area, or sorry, in Station Square. And they do actually do a mixed kind of mixed surface gravelly type of ride every Monday that's happening right now. So we'll share, you know, when that ride happens, there's a moon based organization that does full moon rides. Um, so we'll share a lot of that, that kind of stuff. Um, so the second and much more famous alley cat that we threw was called the Frigid Bitch, is called the Frigid Bitch. 
Um, this one I created essentially because I just wanted an alley cat to exist. That was everything that I personally wanted it to be. Uh, logistically, this alley cat is bare bones. It's go fast and get there first. Um, there's no stopping to fill out Mad Libs or flashcard pop quizzes or anything like that. Um, but for me, the real beauty of this race is that it took all of the elements of the sort of cool, hardcore, aggressively male-dominated trends that I had so much experience with in other races, and it amplified them, but then turned around and offered that space to women and people of underrep gender identities. So I made the race kind of brutal. It's cold. It goes up steep and often cobbled hills. Um, to, go to, to get to some of the checkpoints, you have to trudge through fields of snow, up staircases, through railings, into cliffy woodlands. Um, it's basically the hardest Pittsburgh Alley Cat to win, but because ultimately I wanted to take this, uh, I can do anything, I can conquer any terrain feeling and make it accessible to anyone. Um, an important rule of the race is that any individual racer only has to make it to a single checkpoint to place in the standing. So very few people actually hit every single checkpoint. Um, and those are the people that win, but everybody can show up and kick ass at whatever level is challenging for them and brings them joy and satisfaction. So um, because of this, we have a really incredible turnout. It's possibly one of the biggest uh, ladies plus races in the country. Um, last year, I think we had 165 racers. So it's a really great race to take part in if you're interested in meeting a lot of other really um, awesome cyclists involved in the Pittsburgh cycling scene. And we also always need a small army of volunteers. So if you or somebody you know would rather participate in that way, we would love to have you. Um, so that race happens every February and the registration board is on Bike Reg, um, which again, I can put in the chat, but I wanted to bring that up as another great cycling resource. So if you're interested in racing bikes, Bike Reg is a website that allows you to search for cycling events in your area or out of your area. Um, you can set a location and search a radius from your location. Um, and then you can register for those races, see all of the event notes. You can usually see who else is registered for them. Um, Frigid Bish registration has been on there for a number of years. Um, there's, you can, you can also search by type of race. So I, I'm, I think you can search by gravel if that was something that you were interested in, as we were talking about earlier, but you could also search by road or cyclocross or criterium or uh, a variety of different types of racing, whatever you're interested in. Um, and there are also uh, the local criterium races that happen weekly in the summer um, are also on there. So those races are hosted by the Allegheny Cycling Association of which I am on the board. And we are always trying to get more racers out, especially new people. So these are short, fast road bike races that happen Tuesday and Wednesday nights at the Bud Harris Cycling Track in Highland Park, which is near that police station on Washington Boulevard, um, also known as the Oval. Um, so uh, ACA, Dallying Cycling Social or ACA Racing is on Facebook and Instagram. And there's more info about the races on the um, ACA Racing website. Um, I also always encourage people to come down and spectate and cheer if they're interested in racing, but they want to get a sense of what crit races are about before they fully jump into them. Um, so I'm also always trying to get DIY community groups off the ground so people feel empowered to start their own rides. Um, I've created the Women's Weekly Road Rides group on Facebook where people can connect with others and post their own rides. Um, this kind of brings me back to Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes. So this year I hosted weekly training rides for the Frigid Bitch the first six weeks of the year. So these were cold, about 30 mile training rides that we did every week, Saturdays and Sundays. And um, because the energy from those was so great, I'm trying to snowball that, uh, no pun intended, over into fairly regular group rides throughout the year. So Pittsburgh Babes on Bikes does host semi-weekly group rides um, and these rides are split into various pace groups, so A, B, and C pace groups. The A pace is a drop ride for athlete level riders, so it's quick. It's a quick paced ride, and um, if you fall off, you may get dropped. Um, the B pace is more of a no drop ride at sort of a fit commuter pace, and the C group is a slow roll for everybody. Um, how many groups we have week to week varies based on how many ride leaders we can get. 
Uh, but when rides are planned, the details do go up on the Pittsburgh Bay Zone Bikes website and Instagram feeds. So if you want to come to a ride or lead a ride or be a guest group planner, um, you can get in touch. And like I said, I'll put a lot of those um, resources in the chat. Um, but that is basically everything. I just saw a question that says, are those weekly? So the rides that we host are, are semi-regular. Um, there's not a set schedule for them. We will post them when we plan them, but we often will work around other big races that happen or sometimes we'll just work around weather if, it, if we see that in advance. They typically happen roughly bi-weekly, so every other week. Yeah, and that's it for me. Cool, thank you so much, Annalena. Um, so Katie is uh, next to talk about free ride, which is more of um, a resource than kind of a community, but still extremely uh, valuable and necessary. So um, Katie, I believe you're a co-host. Let me know if you have any trouble uh, sharing your screen. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, um, Annalena. And I've been on the Frigid Pitch many times and it's always so much fun. So I will plug that as well. Um, thank you, Natalie, for hosting. So yes, my name is Katie, I'm Katie Blackburn, and I'm with Freeride. So I do have a couple, just like two slides to share that are based um, on our schedules as well as I uh, like um, Robin your idea of pulling up the website so free ride is a space in which we are at first an educational community spike space right so what that means is if you have bike and you want to maintain it but aren't sure how how to adjust brakes your shifters how to patch a tire um, first and foremost we're trying to provide a space, safe space for everyone to come into the doors. We have volunteers with the knowledge and know-how, previous bike experience, right, that can support anyone to learn and teach those skills. Um, it operates at a couple different ways, both structured and unstructured, which I'll talk about, um, as well as from an environmentally sustainable practice, we also collect bikes. So what that means is anyone who has a bike in the area, either Pittsburgh or beyond, who wants to drop it off, parts, components, anything like that, they don't know what to do with. Uh, maybe they upgraded parts, maybe it's an old bike that was for a child that's, you know, the child has outgrown. You can donate those to our space. Um, and then those either get redonated to specific organizations that go um, like a specific identity, right? So we have some that are for children, we have some that are looking for just a 26 inch mountain bike because of what they're doing. So we'll cycle back into the community and the streams that we are connected to, or those go on the floor and are available to the public. Anyone can, you know, buy for regular monetary reason, which everything's priced between about 25 and $100. So it's all super cheap or you can volunteer. And every hour that you volunteer with us, that turns into like $10 of shop credit. So you could volunteer with us for five hours and walk away with a free bike. Um, the caveat is, right, so those bikes that have been donated have different various things in that um, the conditions that they're in, they might need, you know, new tires or might need um, new brake pads or something like that. So we create a space for folks to walk in who might not know um, how to maintain and upkeep bikes and then provide with space, both tools and physical, you know, benches to work on it, as well as the knowledge know-how. We have both like books. And if you're more of like a, you know, teach yourself learner, create that space, or like I said, our volunteers, um, which, you know, I volunteer um, on our website, you'll be able to see uh, how to get involved. This will give us a schedule of what's going on. So as you can see, Monday nights is our main volunteers that's happening at this moment. This is a space where you can walk in and each Monday night is a different you know, project, different focus. Some days we might be just focusing on how to patch tires. And if you've never patched a tire or if you want practice patching a tire, like it's building those skill sets, it might be sorting parts, it might be stripping down bikes. So breaking the bikes into the components of aluminum, steel, rubber, et cetera. Um, and then you can see on here Tuesdays and Saturdays, we have our open shops. 
Open shops means that the space is open for folks to walk in with their bikes to work on those projects. It's open for folks to come in and obtain a bike, look at the bikes. Um, it's also still a, also a space to volunteer. So if you're not available Mondays, but you still want to earn shop credit, you're welcome to come in on that Tuesdays. And then you'll see on Wednesdays, we kind of oscillate from project night to council meetings. So the councils are, are like leadership time. Project night is specifically designed for volunteers and those that staff, which you know open the shop, um, have access to come in and work on their own projects. So I have included this in a slide format. Again, just, I know this was being recorded and, and to continue. So in a quick little snippet, so if you wanna go back and look at these of what I'm referring to on Mondays, Tuesday open shop, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Saturdays is usually the busiest time. So I would honestly recommend to come in on Tuesday nights um, if you're coming in for the first time to explore. Usually Tuesdays is when I'm there. Um, I'm there every other Tuesday evening. And what you might not see, but you might know we have had in the past, pre-pandemic, we hosted, um, it was called Woman and Queer Night. And Woman and Queer Night was really focused on creating that space that, again, kind of going into the theme of the evening, that was traditionally not, um, not a space or not created carved out space for folks that identified um, as women, other gender identities, other queer identities, and so what that typically looked like, it was on Wednesdays, it was solely staffed by those that shared the identities of women or queer, um, which as you can see it not being on here now, because we, we lost a lot of volunteers during the pandemic. We, as you probably um, may be aware, have <laughs> shut down and um, really, you know, went to a model that was just specific days for donations, specific days for repair, specific days um, so we are back um, starting this summer, right, at this capacity. So I'm kind of putting a call out there. Freeride has a physical space. Freeride has the support. We have leadership on board. We have volunteers that are super um, committed to being inclusionary to all identities. And so if that's something that we're interested in, in doing, I just cannot do it by myself, right? So we can create that space back um, or we can make it look like something else. Um, so I'm putting out both, obviously this is the address and, but also my email um, or stop in on Tuesdays and, and, and kind of see if this makes sense to continue as it had been in the past and has operated in different iterations and, or is this something new? Um, and what I mean by that is creating space in our typical model but you know, providing specific trainings for our staff and, and volunteers, or that means having partnerships with the other folks on the call and or creating space for specific groups. Um, for example, you know, if um, those from any other Fridge Bit Raj wants to start or end at free ride, like that's that's something that um, we're open and willing to to start and jump off from. Um, so that was kind of free ride in a very quick nutshell. I can talk about my history or I can talk more about the space and the different iterations, but I wanted to kind of open it up and make sure I got everything. I know some folks on this call had, have been at free ride too. So, and if not, then we can move right along. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Katie. Um, I know we talked offline about the, the importance of that space being kind of reserved and carved out. And so I hope some people on this call, you know, take interest in that and we can, we can bring it back and the woman and non-binary group can, can go there and do like some know your bike classes and some stuff uh, just to educate some more people. Uh, yeah, so for sure. Um, so next we have Karen. Karen, are you here? Yeah. Okay, cool. I saw you were in the waiting room, like you popped in and popped out, but- um, Yeah, I had to change Wi-Fi network, so. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, so Karen is gonna talk about uh, the wheel mill and then um, Angelica is also here to talk about the wheel mill because you guys complement each other, I believe. Um, so I will let you take it away, Karen. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, 
The Wheel Mill is an indoor bike park in the Homewood neighborhood of Pittsburgh, in case you don't know. Um, it's our first indoor bike park. I don't know if we'll have another one, but been going since 2013, I believe, um, coming up on our 10th anniversary. And if you've never been, it's a, it's a really good space to get comfortable with bike skills. Um, this and a lot of other places like it tend to what you might have seen is, you know, and especially if you just stop in when you walk in the door past the shop area, the first thing you see is the biggest, scariest stuff that they have. <laughs> so it can be kind of intimidating, but there is actually a lot of other um, spaces in the in the wheel mill that are made for beginners, made for intermediate riders. Um, and we do a lot of teaching of all levels of riders. We do a lot of teaching of, you know, learn to ride, adults as well as children, um, on up to, to wanting to do the biggest jumps that there are around here. Um, I started teaching, well, I started, call it teaching, call it skills coaching, um, but I started doing that the first time professionally was here at the wheel mill. I had done it informally for years before that. Um, I used to, I was, uh, working for Dirt Rag and Bicycle Times magazines, the editors of those. And even before that, I was a bike shop manager. And um, we had tons of people, but particularly women asking, how can I get more confident on a bike? How can I gain some skills without just simply going on a ride and being left off the back and you know, um, trying hard to keep up without really knowing how? Um, and Annalena, what, what she's doing kind of speaks to the road side of that. We kind of speak to the to the mountain and um, gravel and also like uh, commuter street kind of stuff a little bit, but primarily to like mountain biking. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a revolution that has happened. There used to not really be any skills instruction until I don't know, like ten years ago there was a program that started to um, actually certify people to become coaches. And a, a friend and I had been teaching just informally, like, you know, we'd had women's mountain bike rides and would, would tell people how to get over logs or how to like, you know, survive in different muddy, rooty situations. Um, there was always a lot of demand for it and we could put as much time as we wanted to into it. And for years, we would be like, we've got to go get certified as coaches. We've got to, like, you know, make it official. Finally, we did that in 2014. Um, and I actually began teaching with the wheel mill, like, right away, because, you know, lots of people ask about it. Um, been doing it ever since. And it's, it's really amazing. It's wonderful to create a space for women, non-binary people to come and learn how to do some cool bike stuff, how to have bike skills, how to, have, how to be more confident on a bike, but in that kind of safe space. You know, the same thing that Women Bike Pittsburgh is, is um, creating. Um, it's been really powerful and of all the different bike related jobs I've had, <laughs> there's been a lot. This is my most favorite because it's just, um, it really, it feels important to me in a way that is maybe, I don't know if I'm deluding myself, but like, I see uh, women just get more confident in their whole lives as well as just on a bike. And um, it's almost like being a counselor as well as an instructor, um, helping people overcome fears, physical fears, I think really helps overcome mental fears as well. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of good, a lot of benefits that come out of it. And Besides the wheel mill, I'm also a league certified instructor along with Robin. Um, I've done a bunch of work with Bike Pittsburgh on their city cycling program. I've helped develop the uh, curriculum for that. Um, that's basically the classes to learn how to ride on the streets, particularly in traffic in Pittsburgh. And we based a lot of the curriculum on mountain bike skills because Pittsburgh is, you've, as you've probably seen, the roads are not smooth. <laughs> We don't have smooth pavement at all. We have a lot of hills, we have a lot of cobblestones, a lot of potholes. So a lot of the mountain bike skills come into play running on the street for sure. Um, so we wanted to make a curriculum that helps people get more confident, first of all, with bike handling, 
specifically in Pittsburgh, and then helps you get more confident, you know, dealing with traffic. So um, some of the things that we offer specifically at the wheel mill are, um, well, first of all, I do a weekly clinic every Monday night. In fact, I got to get out of here at 7.30 because that's the time for our clinic. Uh, all women, non-binary non folks are welcome to come 7.30 to 8.30. It's a fundamental skills clinic just to get you up to speed on like um, the very basics of bike handling. And I try to teach people enough so that they could come here to the wheel mill and have a good time and not be intimidated. Other than that, we also have uh, lessons, private lessons, you can do group lessons. Um, we have lots of uh, other opportunities like uh, summer camps for children. Those are really popular. Um, we do a ton of learn to ride lessons, like I said, for adults as well as children. Um, actually, I have a specific ask for this. Company for the women to offer. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm not trying to move over this way. You're you're good now. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. You, you started breaking up just when you said that you had something to ask us, and then you left us in suspense. Right. Oh, no. Okay. So we're, well, we're, we're I was, waiting. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. what type of clinics you guys would be interested in other than the Monday night basic ones. Um, we worked with our insurance company to be able to offer lessons and clinics outside the wheel mill as well. So any of the local mountain bike parks. Um, and I'm just curious if you'd be interested in like uh, a skills clinic outside um, any of the county parks we can teach at. North Park is a good place. I do a lot of stuff at Frick. Um, yeah, so if you want to, you can put stuff in the chat suggestions. You can email me. Um, I'm going to drop my email in the chat. It's pretty easy to remember, Karen at the wheelmill.com. And um, yeah, I was, would love to set up some clinics and like, they don't need to be large, but like whoever would be interested to learn like something specific or just general bike skills outside in the dirt, um, how to do really, that's a good one. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, there's lots of things that are like, wheelie is a good example of, it seems like a bike trick that's just, a bike trick for doing just for doing it for the sake of doing it but it actually brings in other skills that are useful for lots of other things so you can learn how to do really but you can learn how to like apply those skills to other things at the same time which is pretty awesome um yeah let's see i could uh natalie is am i able to share my screen or is that um don't worry about it if not you should be able to oh no i can now you're able to, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so let's go to the Wimmel's website just so I can kind of like, so y'all um, looking at the, the Pittsburgh Bay Plan Bikes website. You can see my 40 million tabs that I have open. Um, yeah, there's lots of things available. Actually, there's a bike shop here at the Wheel Mill now, which some folks might not realize. They are pretty full service bike shop in terms of repairs. They tend to focus on BMX and uh, you know park bikes for um, what they sell in terms of bikes, but they can get hold of a lot of other things. It's actually a good place to bring your bike for repair particularly right now because they're not as well known as some of the other shops and so there's less weight. Um, there's a list of events, Ride Like a Girl is our weekend that we do typically in March, which is our biggest event. That's a two day um, skills camp. Um, actually it's two days, you can do one or both days, Saturday and Sunday. We bring in coaches from all across the country and that's a really awesome time to come and just be with a bunch of other women, non-binary folks that are all learning together. And we do a lot to hype each other up. Um, summer camp for kids, there's classes, women's mountain bike is the one that is Monday night. 
Um, there I am. <laughs> um, Angelica subs for me sometimes, especially last fall, I injured myself and she was able to step in and keep them running. Um, there's a page for lessons, mountain bike, BMX, and learn to ride. Um, Wilma also offers birthday parties, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop my share now. You guys can explore that all on your own. Um, let's see. Uh, I, someone's saying in the chat they would like to better emotionally deal with bullies to fully regain joy of cycling. Totally hear that. Um, sometimes going out on the streets and trying to get somewhere by bike or um, even walking is, is an adventure in just how hard your skin is, how tough your shell is. So um, some of that, like I said, is, is it comes from being physically confident, I think, on your bike, whether that's, you know, part of it is being, becoming a little bit fitter, chicken and egg, you know, the more you ride, the fitter you become, but the, the, you, I don't want to say that you have to be fit in order to ride because you don't, um, comes with it, but having some confidence in your handling skills definitely helps be able to just be like, well, if this driver comes too close to me, if this person isn't giving me the right away, whatever happens, I can, I know how to deal with it. Um, I don't know if that really answers your question, but yeah. Um, so that's a lot about the wheel mill. We will have some time for Q&A, I think later, Natalie, is that true? So other questions might occur to folks. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have some time after, um, hopefully before 7.30, before you have to leave us. But I, I believe Angelica can field some of those questions as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks to you all for joining. I love doing these women bike events. I've been doing them for a while and it's always, uh, it's always really wonderful. Yeah, we appreciate you doing this before you have to go to work, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'll literally I'm gonna I'm at the wheel mill now I'm gonna poke my head out the door and see if anybody comes sometimes when it's hot it, it's um not as popular so if no one shows up I can just come back and <laughs> sounds, enjoy. Good. sounds good um so Angelica we can turn it over to you to give just a just your your perspective about the yeah world. yeah sure um angelica pytran here um like karen said i got the opportunity to kind of help her out when she was injured earlier this winter and had an absolute blast um doing the women's classes on on monday nights um we I don't know, I could ever, I think at one point we had like six ladies show up on like some of the coldest, snowiest days um, out there to challenge and learn, you know, during during the winter and improve, you know, how the summer and, you know, spring, spring and summer would go. So it was super fun. Um, my background is, you know, I, I really went to the, the wheel mill and learned, you know, kind of those skills and some of those intimidating things in that space. Um, Harry, the owner of the wheel mill is like a huge proponent of women and non-binary folks in general and and just as like the most welcoming place ever despite it feeling intimidating. There's so many people like there to welcome you and kind of show you the ropes and the introduction that Karen's class does is just helps kind of break down that barrier and was, you know, a great start for me and I just learned so much and, you know, like any skill on a bike, it's super addictive. So just having that opportunity to kind of have that setting in the winter and kind of really focus. Obviously they're open in the summer, but I, I think that's when I like to really heads down and kind of work on things there. So I had absolute best. Um, I got the opportunity to help coach this year for the Ride Like a Girl weekend. And like Karen kind of talked about this, but like the vibe and hype is just a bunch of women supporting each other, um, working on things that, you know, almost, you know, terrify them, things they never thought were possible. Um, just a setting, you know, that was super inspiring. Um, I had some friends, wives I got to meet that just like absolutely killed it, stepped out of their comfort zone. So it's just like a place to, we had a bunch of people come from the road and all sorts of things and, you know, kind of take, take themselves out of their comfort zone and just absolutely slay it and um, boost their confidence and all biking and translate that to whatever kind of biking they did. So 
Yeah, I'm. My background is I'm a enduro racer and downhill racer. I primarily just do downhill now. Um, so if anybody has questions about getting into cross country racing or any type of racing on more of the mountain bike side, um, I'm always here for insight. The closest mountain for downhill is Snowshoe, West Virginia. So it's it's a bit of a haul. But um, any of Buddy, ever interested in kind of going that route, uh, please contact me. I can put my email in the chat and um, just feel free to reach out kind of, we can meet up. I'm there a lot, um, kind of show you the ropes of that setting. Um, not something we have in Pittsburgh and there are not very many women in it. So I'm just always trying to promote that um, in general. So yeah, short and sweet, Karen did most of the good stuff. Cool. Thank you, Angelica. We appreciate yeah. you coming out tonight as well. Um, so last is, uh, well, last but not least is Alyssa um, to talk about this new initiative Venture Outdoors is doing, which um, is pretty exciting, I think. And um, you do, I believe it's with Sarah Khalil, who also works at Pogo. So it's, um, you know, also just another way of there's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff in the cycling community and we want to empower everybody to feel like, you know, you can be a leader in this community and like come out and join us. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Alyssa. Awesome, thanks for, thanks for organizing. Um, this, I just have a few kind of photos to share. So I will do that and Yeah, so uh, my name is Alyssa Crawford. I work for Venture Outdoors. I started, I mean, I learned to bike as a child, but I kind of got into biking when I was in college. I didn't have a vehicle. And so I wanted to get around um, without a car. And that just kind of really, I just really enjoyed it. And I mostly bike commuted. Um, and that's, I think still the primary way that I ride, but I like to go bike camping and a couple of these pictures are from the frigid bitch. Um, for as much time as I spent on a bike, I don't really have too many pictures of me on a bike. So I had to find these on Facebook today. Um, but yeah, I've been working with Venture Outdoors since last fall and um, something that always had interested me to learn was mountain biking. However, I did not have a mountain bike. I also didn't feel as if I wanted to spend a lot of money on a mountain bike, um, not knowing if it was something that I would really enjoy because um, bikes are expensive and I already have a couple, so I, I more than a couple. So <laughs> uh, I wasn't ready to make that investment. Um, but I, and I thought maybe some other people might be experiencing the same thing. Uh, so last fall, I started working to get some mountain bikes for Venture Outdoors. So um, who here has heard of Venture Outdoors before? Yeah, a couple of people. I, ha I have some volunteers on this call, so um, glad to see some familiar faces. So we're a nonprofit organization based in the Pittsburgh area. Our mission is to remove barriers and create outdoor experiences. Um, and we do a lot of different activities, kind of the most common activity. If you've seen us out on the rivers on our yellow kayaks, that's us. So we do a lot of kayaking, but we do hiking. We do a ton of youth programs. Um, we teach kids about fire building skills and we do fishing, so all kinds of outdoor recreation opportunities. And I'm really excited to share a little bit about our women and non-binary beginner mountain biking program. So um, this photo, our, this is our volunteer, Sarah Khalil. She's kind of the, um, I guess, lead volunteer right now. Uh, we're offering this program currently monthly. Uh, we only have six mountain bikes. Um, they're really nice Kona hardtail bikes for people to try. And I think we would love to offer this program more frequently if we had some more volunteers. So if there are some folks on this call who want to share 
um, their skills if they're uh, if they're mountain bikers themselves maybe we can connect um, but for now we're providing it monthly and we we just got the bikes last week and the thanks to the women in non-binary Facebook group, those got reserved in like a single day. So there's definitely interest. I wish we had more bikes uh, for people to try, but like I said, I am working to get more bikes. We love to offer this program more frequently. It's very beginner. So I just went to it for the first time last week with Ernie Bikes and Sarah kind of goes over some basic bike handling skills and we do like uh, the ABCs um, bike check. We, ch we check helmet. We provide helmets too when we do helmet ch check, kind of a lot of those basic safety things. And then we went out for a ride and it was, it was kind of slow going because pretty much no one had mountain bike before, <laughs> um, but it was super fun and everyone had a really good time. We only had some uh, minor spills. And so these are the, on this, slide here. These are the upcoming dates that we have planned. They're all up on the website, I think, except for the August 13th date. That is going to be kind of its own special event led by a different volunteer, and that'll be on a Saturday afternoon, and that'll be a part of our big day out where we'll have about 20 different outdoor activities that day. Um, and I did forget to mention that these trips are only $5 and if costs, if even that cost is a barrier, uh, we could certainly provide this activity for free for folks to try. Um, yeah, so thanks for letting me talk a little bit about our new program. Um, if you want to reach out to me, it's here's my, my contact information or if you have further questions, I'm happy to ans answer those on this call. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Alyssa. Really appreciate you coming out. We appreciate all of the guest speakers uh, for coming out. So um, we did have a question in the chat. Um, it was about free ride, which I think, Katie, you might have answered in the chat as well. Um, so the question was, do you offer workshops on bike maintenance or would we uh, come out during the volunteer Monday nights to learn those skills for free ride? And so Katie did answer it. So I can read your answer. And if you want to elaborate, that's okay. Um, but free ride host workshop classes, we have had we have hosted two so far this season. It depends on the educator's avail availability when those are, and it will be posted on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the next best option is to stop in on Mondays. Yes. And uh, Bike Pittsburgh did host uh, like a Know Your Bike class at Free Ride, which was, I went, it was great. Um, everybody was super sweet and welcoming. Um, so yeah, and I know we're trying to do that more in the future as well. Um, but yeah, so then somebody else said, thank you for hosting this and for all the speakers. Yes, thank you to the speakers. Um, if there's any other questions, you can put it in the chat. You can unmute yourself. You can raise your hand, um, do whatever. This is kind of your time and your space. Um, hi. <laughs> so I'm kind of a newbie in Pittsburgh, but I'm from Chicago. And I, um, I have two questions. One, so I, I just joined the Strava groups for a few of these things. But how do you view like the upcoming events on that? Is that how that works? That's my first question. Sorry. So um, Pittsburgh Race on Bikes has a Strava group and we will post the events. Um, we'll post events when we have rides scheduled. So typically what happens, I think Strava will straight up email you anytime there's an event posted okay. group that you belong to. Um, 
we don't have any currently posted. So that might not be, that might be why you're, you're not seeing any if you're looking at ours. But when okay. we post them, um, you'll get an email. You pro I think you get a Strava notification as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and my other question is just like, um, I love biking. I've loved biking since I was a kid. Um, and I, I did more of it in other places that I've lived, but like, what would you, what's good advice that you would give for someone like trying to meet people and trying to find like groups of people to go biking with? Because my issue is that like, you know, I'm, I'm down to go to events and stuff. I just like, I feel like a lot of people have like groups of people that they go with that are just kind of like friends for rides. I mean, would you just recommend like going to events and meeting people and trying to make those connections or like, what's a good way to break into the bike scene here? Cause it's really, there's so many different things and it's kind of intimidating. And I keep being like, oh gosh, I don't know how to, how to navigate all of this. That's just kind of an open question. I think um, this is Robin speaking, Nora. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I think um, Bike Pittsburgh has a calendar mm -hmm. and they list most of the, I have to make sure my rides are on there, but they <laughs> list most of the rides that are scheduled and happening around the city. Mm -hmm. But um, I talked about um, Black Girls Do Bike, and I talked about women at work, and um, join the Facebook groups. That's how okay. people um, find me, and um, that's my recommendation, is to join, to join any of the Facebook groups and look at their um, schedule, their writing schedule, which will be mm -hmm. under events or schedule. And, you know, we welcome riders at all levels. Women at Work has the easy ride on Thursday. We have trail rides for Black Girls Do Bike and don't be intimidated by the name. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the name that was given um, upon its inception. But cool. we welcome everyone. We are definitely, you know, open to non-binary and, you know, we're yeah. all just in this thing together and trying to make it to the next day, really. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Ms. Robin. Uh, Claude, yeah. did you have a question or did you have an answer? <laughs> I have an answer for Nora. Yeah. Um, if you have like days or times that you like to go that don't match with groups that are already established, um, just put out a notice on Women Bike Pittsburgh, for example, for the places and types of rides that you want to do and okay never and you 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 probably will get responses that's how i've met up with people awesome thank you so much i'm going to second that and say you you will um we had the first ride of the season was back in march and we had several people just show up by themselves and then they like rode together and exchanged phone numbers by the nice. end of and now they they communicate and like go on rides. Oh, um, that's awesome! Independently of our rides, and they show up to our rides together. So, yeah, part of it is definitely like I I'm in the middle. Well, I'm towards the end of an AmeriCorps year right now, and on AmeriCorps, like my schedule so schedule so full that I'm like, oh, there's no time for things. But maybe like once it slows down, I'll like yeah, try to come to more events and meet people and do that. Thank you all so much. This was all very very helpful for a newbie <laughs> in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, I, I also, I know like I'm the person who can't stop talking about alley cats, but, um, <laughs> the way that I like the way that I met people in the bike scene was by doing alley cats. And a lot of them, I know it can be kind of intimidating because it is, it is kind of filtered under the category of a race and not everybody feels like they want to be racing bikes, but a lot of alley cats are more like games. So there was one this past weekend that was Scrabble based. Um, mm -hmm. that Sarah Schreck posted where you get a bunch of Scrabble tiles and you'd have to puzzle your way through street names around Pittsburgh. And a lot of times people yeah. will, um, alley cats will have teams that compete. And whenever I would do them, like I, I mentioned briefly, like the first one I ever did, I ended up kind of sort of teamed up with Scott Bricker, who wasn't somebody that I, that I knew and became like a very important name in the bike, in the Pittsburgh scene, Pittsburgh mm -hmm. bike scene. Um, and so I did just want to mention um, that a lot of times people will like, <laughs> they'll meet people and team up at the alley cats and then have this experience that is, um, you know, competitive, but also fun. And then that kind of create a bond there. 
And um, there is one, just so everybody knows, there's an alley cat coming up this weekend on Saturday. Um, the, it's a bear, it's hosted by Bear Dog Bikes. Um, and it's kind of like a clue, like a scavenger hunt clue alley mm -hmm. cat. So if, um, if anybody's interested in that, it is on the Bear Dog Bikes Instagram page and we've shared it on Facebook page on bikes. But I just thought I'd put that out there in case anybody wasn't um, aware that that was happening. So cool. thank you. Thanks, Annalena. That sounds really like a really cool race. Um, and we, we volunteered for the Frigid Pitch this year, and I know people came by themselves, and they were kind of like adopted into other groups that were there together. So very, very welcoming community. I'll just start showing up. <laughs> yeah, that's the best advice. Um, just even go out on the trails by yourself, and you can meet people that way, too. I've met some really nice people just hanging out on the trails. Awesome. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you and welcome to Pittsburgh. Thanks. <laughs> Laura said, that's how I met my main biking buddy on the gap. <laughs> awesome. yeah, there's, there's been people that have met and started running together through coming to the windmill as well. It's, you know, just like anywhere else, any of the other resources. Pittsburgh's good that way. <laughs> yeah, very friendly city. We still have like a couple more minutes if anybody else has any questions. I, I have a couple questions. Um, and I, I apologize for, I hope things go better for my presentation tomorrow. Like all of a sudden everything was go copacetic and then that screen came up and. Just just update your, your Chrome before tomorrow. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to tell me how to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. But, um, so I did not know that the wheel mill had a safe place for new cyclists, like someone trying to learn how to ride a bike until I um, helped with an event over there. So they have a room that's padded, of course, where people who have never rode a bike can learn without the um, threat of falling onto the pavement or cement. You know what I'm gonna show you? Um, since I'm here, we'll see if the Wi-Fi holds up, but um, there is, I don't know if you can see the space, there's like a big empty room. Yes. With, we have some like, markings on the floor that help people to focus like when they're learning how to steer mm -hmm. a bike you know give them something to, to like aim for um this is one room that's upstairs yeah the upstairs it's like it's um there are some pictures around but it's it's one of the parts you don't see too much and then here's the bigger room with like some smaller obstacles around the outside and in the center and then there's this nice big green um painted area to like you know once again it's a good place to practice like just going a straight line for newer cyclists but lots of smaller obstacles as well to get used to going over logs and um small ramps and things like that Karen for, is, now yeah. is there a fee to get in I'm sure because I know you have to sign a waiver upon coming through the door but um, is there like a fee for people to come in to use that area? How does one get to use that area to learn? Yeah, so there is a fee um, to come in and that is basically just an entry fee. Um, and let's see, I'm looking it up right now. Um, you can do it by day, or you can actually do month to month, or you can do it by the year. Um, a day pass, Monday through Friday, is $25. Weekends, it's $31. Um, 12 and under, there's a discount for that. Um, there also are bike and helmet rentals and pads, if you'd like to be really uh, protected. Um, there is a first-time rider deal if you haven't been here before 
you can get your rental gear, that's bike, helmet, and pads for free um, when you purchase a day pass. And um, there's, there's like a list of like all the rental fees and um, there's a few days that the park is closed, but we tend to be open a lot during the holidays because it's really popular. Um, one bit of advice, if you wanna come and have kind of a, a more calm space to practice, one of the reasons we do the, the uh, women and non-binary night is Monday night is because that's not very busy at all. Weekends can be quite busy. Yeah. Um, lots of lots of little kids dashing all over the place. But uh, yeah, Monday night is probably the least busy, but any of the weekend, week, I'm sorry, weekday nights are not busy. And weekdays, the park's open from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So 2 to 10. That's good to know. Yeah. And I have a question for, um, for, let's see, Katie, I think, for Bikes on Babes, Babes on Bikes, rather. Uh, that's uh, Annalena. Uh, does she leave? Well, I'm Babes on Bikes. Katie is, um, oh, yeah, I got it now. Okay. So um, you said you have weekly road rides? We do semi-weekly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Semi-weekly. And where do they like? Where do they start from? I know that's on your website, probably, but so they usually when we were doing the training rides in the winter time, we were starting from Trace Brewing just because they had heat and bathrooms and an outdoor courtyard that we could park bikes in. But now that it's getting nicer out, we've been starting at Friendship Park in the like Bloomfield Lawrenceville area, um, and that's not for any particular reason, just because it's near where I live, and so that's where I start. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's just the regular road ride um yeah so um the way that we've been doing it is we have I have a couple there's a there's a gr small group of people who have been helping me lead the ride so I'll usually re lead the fast paced ride um that's more of a like workout for athlete types and then I have some ride leaders who do the b pace ride which like I said, is, is like a quick commuter pace. Um, and then when I can get people to lead the C ride, that one's kind of this like, casual slow roll. Um, but what I've been kind of experimenting with doing, and I, I did this the, on the last ride and I'm planning on doing it on the upcoming ones is um, instead of having all of the groups start meet and start at the same time, I've been stacking them. So I've been doing like, the the a pace would meet at nine and the b pace would meet at like 10 30 or 11 or something and the c's would meet at 12 or 12 30. um so that way people can double up or people can try out a ride that might be too fast for them um and then you know circle back and try try an easier one and that way i can also lead uh more of the rides and you know the 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 riders who do the a pace group can stick around and help marshal the B pace group, for example. So that's something I'm playing with. Um, and I think I'm, I'm planning another ride, an upcoming one, either this weekend or next weekend. Um, and it'll be in that same stacked um, kind of logistical system. Um, yeah, but the, the, the groups, it's, it's really hard. One of the things that's really hard about joining group rides, mm -hmm. both for people who lead them and for people who like want to come to them is knowing the pace because it's all relative. Somebody's fast pace might be somebody else's slow pace, for example. So um, it's really hard. It's always hard to describe accurately to other people what your pacing is. Um, but the A pace is a, is a drop ride. So if you can't keep up, eventually you'll get dropped. The B pace is, is more of a no drop ride. It's not like entirely no drop. So if you are going at a, at a really like a slow roll C pace, you might get dropped, but it's you know it's it's more easier to keep up keep up with and then the sea ride would be good for everybody and we post the details about them on our website and it's and we also post it on um our strava group i try to be really forthcoming with information about where the rides go when they start what can be expected um you know and I, I generally post the routes on ride with gps and on strava so those are two platforms that you can you can both look at the routes and you can, you know, download them to your phone or to your computer if you have a bike computer um, and utilize those as you ride. 
Yeah. And thank you for that information. Going off of that too, when we do the women on binary rides, we do the, the C or slow roll conversationally paced, um, no drop, you know, nobody's getting left behind. And, um, that's really good for people who are maybe new to Pittsburgh and don't know the terrain or just getting back into biking or getting into biking. But, um, we also have people who, you know, it's just, it's nice because you can just ride and have a conversation with your friend. And that's how we say it. it's like conversationally paced rides. So, um, so yeah, like that's really Annalena hit the nail on the head of why we, we wanted to have this workshop and, and talk about it was that there are different rides for everybody. And so some people might come to the conversationally paced one and they might get bored. And so there are other ones out there and like, don't feel like you have to be, you know, like, covered in spandex and like a diehard cyclist to go on a group ride either. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. Like, and Ms. Robin said, like, there's the slow roll on Thursdays. Like everybody has their different days and times for these things. So, so yeah, I hope everybody, you know, learned a lot and feels a little bit more empowered and confident to come out to some of these. And um, it is past 730. So and to respect everyone's time on this Monday night, I, unless there's any other questions, I think we're good to wrap up. Um, just got to thank you in the chat. Thank you, speakers. Yes, thank you all so much for, for giving us your time tonight, giving us all your information. Special shout out to Karen for giving us a tour of the wheel mill. <laughs> uh, we really appreciate it. So yeah, um, all the links are in the chat. This will be recorded if you want to rewatch it. I think everyone gave pretty much their contact info. Um, another shout out for the Bike Pittsburgh community calendar. It's on the Bike Pittsburgh website. So if anybody doesn't have their community events on there, please post it. And then it'll be kind of in a centralized place for everyone to access it. Um, and thanks to Angelica for sharing her new kitten. <laughs> um but yeah I will just want to say thank you again um I'm going to stop recording now